This video is showing how I have reapplied glaze to an already glazed fired piece to help correct an issue that I had after the first glaze firing. Hi everyone, welcome back to my home studio. I am Karen with a Walsh of Karen's Pots and Glass. Um, this uh, bowl that I have done for this uh, video today, I have been inspired, of course, by the situation that's going on with our Ukrainian friends in support of them uh, by doing some sunflowers. Now, this video is actually a video that's more of a tutorial on how to glaze something that has already been glaze fired. So this is about reglazing something that maybe didn't come out correctly out of the kiln the first time. So in the case of this uh, pot, I may have been in a little bit of a hurry when I glazed it the first time and I just wasn't paying that much of attention. And I did have some areas that were kind of thin. So when it came out of the kiln, I was like, ah, bummer. So I thought, well, I'm gonna bring it home. And instead of using the exact same color that I used uh, the first time. Uh, I used coyote glazes. I'm a big fan of coyote glazes and that's what I almost exclusively use. But um, I decided to go with some Mako Stroke and Coat. Now, if you've never used the Mako Stroke and Coat, um, I just started using them in this past year. I find them really nice. They have a nice opacity to them. Um, they're uh, uh, it's called Wonder Glaze. They were uh, pretty effective at kind of uh, fixing up some of my spots that I thought were a little thin. So you can use the same glaze. Um, I just didn't have the yellows and things in the coyote um, here at home. So I thought I would show you that. Now, I have some tips. Um, I am going to explain some of those in the uh, video, but I wanted to make sure that you all knew. If you're refiring something, um, don't use the object before you're refiring it. Like if you have a cup in your cabinet for a couple of months and you've been using it for coffee, don't try refiring it because it may have absorbed some moisture. And if it has any moisture in the clay body that it absorbs, it can blow up. Now, the amount of moisture that I'm putting on as far as the glaze, I'm not worried about that seeping into the clay body or anything. And truly, if the clay was already vitrified, it shouldn't be absorbing it. But I would not take a risk with an object that has been uh, fired. So for instance, if someone came to you and said, hey, can you reglaze this plate for me that you know I bought a couple years ago? I would not do that. I think that, you, that you're just running a risk of having a blow up in your kiln. So this was an immediate turnaround where I I decided to reglaze it. Uh, next, um, as things fire, sometimes you might have a tendency to get pinholes in your glaze that maybe weren't there before. So what I do to help avoid that is I do a firing, which is a drop and then a soak. It's a drop, hold, and soak. So I bring it up to the final temperature and then I drop it uh, like by 100 degrees and then I hold it 100 degrees lower and kind of soak it. So it helps to um, allow the surface tension to just kind of like even out a little bit. So if there are pinholes, they can uh, pop. So I will put that in the video description so you can see what I'm talking about. I'll put my firing schedule so you can see, um, and I'll put a link to, um, you know, an article that explains the drop hold soak so you can, you can kind of see that and why you might want to try that sometimes. Uh, next, um, upon refiring something that has been vitrified, um, I always take the firing on a slow, um, slow up and uh, slow down if you can. So I usually do um, a slow firing, not a fast firing, because I want to allow the uh, particles the time to kind of really evenly kind of expand and, and contract. Uh, during uh, certain uh, temperatures. I think it's somewhere around 500, somewhere around 1,000. I'm just ballparking it. There's this um, uh, crystalline inversion, I believe is what it's called, when you have the greatest tendency that you could get um, uh, some thermal shock. Um, you could uh, get a crack that occurs that wasn't there before. So take it slow and that will help to avoid some of that. And uh, one other tip that I have when you're uh, reapplying the glaze, you're going to find that because the glaze has already sealed the surface, 
it's not going to dry and soak into the clay body like it would say on a bisque piece. So it's not going to be easy to take like three layers of glaze and just put on there. When you put a layer of glaze on, it's gonna take a long time for it to dry. Also, I wouldn't brush a layer on, let it dry, and then brush another layer over it because you can like really pull it off. I try to blob it on a little bit thicker. So on that um, that application, I'm really just trying to put it on a little bit heavier um, rather than brushing it like maybe I would traditionally do it. Um, so hopefully you find these tips helpful um, and uh, drop me any questions that you might have below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and uh, keep, keep good thoughts about all of our friends in the Ukraine and um, yeah, let's, let's hope that this situation resolves real soon for them. Okay, and um, this bowl is standard 225 mid-fire stoneware, and it has been bisque fired. And uh, here I'm just trying to apply three even layers of all of my colors. Now, this is the initial glazing that I did where it turned out not to be like I wanted it. So I'm doing my best trying to get three layers on there. Uh, but I will find that apparently I had some areas maybe where it was just thin, it wasn't quite full three layers, or I maybe just missed some edges when I thought I got it. So um, these are coyote glazes. Coyote glazes are what I almost exclusively use. They are very dependable, very good. Um, when you apply them well, they work fine. But my application turned out to be... Um, less than I had hoped for. And uh, then I, uh, you'll see here in just a minute uh, when I show the fired result that uh, some of my details were lacking, some of the layers were just thin, and uh, some of the areas just didn't have even coverage. So I did add iron oxide here with a brush. My goal was the iron oxide would have these nice little black lines, but you can see it didn't really work over that yellow. I've used iron oxide like this with many other coyote glazes and it worked fine. First time I tested it with this yellow and it just didn't look good. It's all, the, the detail is washed out on these flowers. Um, so I thought, well, I've just got to redo this. Um, you can see where the iron oxide is in some areas, but other areas it's completely faded out. So when I did this bowl, uh, I did not follow my own advice and I did not test out this combination before I actually fired it. I just tested it right on the bowl. And you can see that I have some areas that I'm not pleased where um, I actually thought that that coffee bean was going to cover up the yellow and it did not. So, and my iron oxide did not come out nearly as dark as I thought it was going to. So again, that's because I didn't test out this color combination first. So I'm going to try to remedy this and salvage this bowl, but I'm going to switch colors and I'm using the Mako uh, Stroke and Coat. They have more of an opaque quality to them that I would say. And uh, I am just going to be painting over uh, what I have there and perhaps make it a little bit more opaque in some areas. Like I have some areas where I don't know if I just didn't uh, calculate the right number of layers. Maybe I did two instead of three, but I am going to go ahead and do a, a, a nice kind of a heavy layer on all of these. Now because this clay has been through the glaze firing and it's vitrified, it's not a, an easy task to try to put on more than one layer because it doesn't want to dry. Now, one trick that I do use is as I'm working, uh, sometimes I actually heat the bowl up before I start to glaze, but I didn't bother with that because I know it's gonna take me a while to glaze all this. And I will use heat while I'm uh, working on it to get it to dry a little bit, to warm up the ceramic to get it to dry. So. Um, you can use a hair dryer. I'm using just a heat gun that works a little bit faster. So as I put this on there, I just try to blob the glaze on and put it on kind of heavy, one coat, um, kind of thick. 
And again, I'm doing this because I was not pleased with uh, my experiment on the bowl. My uh, glazes just weren't thick enough. For the flowers, that is. I, I like the, the background. It's fine. The, um, I think the uh, sapphire is okay. It could be a little bit thicker, but... You can see I use a heat gun from time to time whenever I need to dry it a little bit more. I'm just trying to dry the yellow before I do any accents uh, over this. So I'm just adding a little bit of the orange accent uh, to the uh, detailing. And then I'm going to be doing uh, the middle there with the brown. And the stroke and coat brown really seem to have fixed the issue. And now I'm just adding a little bit of stroke and coat black as an outline, trying to mimic what I was attempting to do with the iron oxide initially. Now, one thing that I did find with this is that uh, even though I can see those details, some of it did blur a little bit during that fin final firing, and I'm actually okay with the blur. I think it looks all right, but uh, it's uh, where maybe it along the edges of the blue when it was maybe near the sapphire. You'll see where it kind of like just blurred a little bit during the firing. But And now I'm doing the detail on the exterior too, as you can tell. And then I put this in the cone six firing. I did the slow drop hold soak and you can see uh, it, it really pops now. I really like it. And again, maybe some of the edges have blurred, but I'm really okay with this. And uh, I'm very pleased with the way this came out. 